Well, hello and welcome, everybody. I'm really glad you're joining me for this problem right here. Let's hang out and do some math. This is a really fun one. Let's get into the details, right? So we've got a triangle ABC. It's a right triangle with side lengths 5 and 12. We've got a circle that's in blue. Its center is point E. We've got another circle in pink. Its center is point G. Uh, D is the midpoint of the hypotenuse AC. And points A, C, D, and I are all points of tangency. So those are the facts that we're given and our job is to find the ratio of the areas, the blue divided by the pink circles area, and to write our answer as a ratio of integers. So those are the details. If you'd like to try it, go ahead and pause the video now, give it a shot. I did this one a bunch of times. I think it's a really cool problem, and well, I'm excited about sharing my solution with you. But if you get a different solution, you come up with a different method, I'd really love to hear from you. So please leave me a comment. All right, now, here's the math we're gonna use. So we are going to use this really cool formula to find the radius of a circle inscribed uh, inside of a right triangle. It's pretty cool. Pythagorean theorem always seems to come up. Uh, we're going to have to use the fact that tangent lines that intersect are equal distance from the circle. And then the trickiest part, I think, is we have to express some parts in terms of others in these problems right here to set up a system of equations. And in the end, we're going to be simplifying some rational expressions. All right. Let's start. You ready? Here we go. If you got stuck and you got to this part and you came back, maybe that's enough of a clue to like get you over the hump. You can get it on your own. So go ahead and give it a try. Pause it. Give it a shot right now. I'm going to dive into my solution. You ready? Three, two, and one. Here we go. Now, my first claim, it's low-hanging fruit, but let's grab the obvious, right? AC is 13 because we have a 5, 12, 13 right triangle. You could use the Pythagorean theorem or you could just recognize that as a fact. And of course, since the hypotenuse is 12, then A to D and C to D are both 6.5. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there and let's clean this up a little bit. Now, second fact, second claim, radius of the circle G is 2. And the reason I know that it's 2 is because, well, there's a nice little formula right here. You can add the legs subtract the hypotenuse divide by two and that actually gives you the radius here's the formula and i did a video on it here recently if you'd like to see that video i'll leave a link to that video in the description below but basically add the legs subtract the hypotenuse divide by two and that's how you can find the radius of any circle inscribed in a right triangle so this radius it's two all right so now we got that under our hat here's one of the things we're going to have to do we, the way I did this question anyway, I ended up having to deal with the radius of the giant circle that's, you know, encapsulating everything except for this little part right here. We're going to call it capital R. Now, its center, we're going to say is point O. I don't know exactly where it is, so I'm going to say, hey, it looks kind of like this. And here's what I'm going to claim about that point. I'm going to say that D, O, and E are, co D, O, E, and I are collinear. So let's explore that, see why this is true. Let's not just take it as an assumption. And actually, the first time I did this problem, I did assume where point O was, and I got the wrong answer. So really important not to make those kinds of assumptions. Easy mistake to make. So let's see here. AC is a chord. Might be the radius, but it's definitely a chord for the large circle, and it's bisected at point D. That means that there is a radius that is perpendicular to that chord, and it passes through point D. All right, so next thing. Point D is also tangent to circle E. Therefore, DE is perpendicular to AC, and it's perpendicular at point D just like OD. So D, O, and E are absolutely 100% collinear. Now, the same kind of argument is going to be made for point I. Point I is tangent to both of the circles, so that means that there is a radius that would be perpendicular to the tangent line right here that goes to E, so IE is perpendicular to that tangent line, so is IO to at the same point I, so all of those four points, D, O, E, and I, are collinear. Or, they're all on the same line. So that's a big key. That's an important fact to know. It allows us to express each of the radius in terms of the other. And let's see if we can come up some expressions for those. We're going to say capital R is the radius of the largest circle with center O, and lowercase r is going to be the center or the radius of the circle with center E. All right, let's dive in. So this is always the leap of faith when you're doing these problems. You know, you're watching a video, it's already been cleaned up and it's been run through, but 
you don't really know if this is the right way, but this is what you're going to do. This is what I tried at first. I'm like, hey, let's try this triangle right here. I know one side is 6.5, and I know this is the radius of the largest circle. So let's go ahead and say that's capital R, and let's say this little distance from O to D, let's say that distance is X. So we have triangle DOC, and I can use the Pythagorean theorem for that. R squared equals X squared plus 6.5 squared, all right? Now the other triangle that we're going to use, it's a little harder to see. We could draw it down here, but it gets kind of jumbled up with this other circle, so we're going to draw the same one up on top. So let me show you. So that point right there is separating A to D into two parts. We have a 3 and a 3.5 right here. So from A to this point is 3, from this point to here is 3.5. Those add up to 6.5, so that adds up right, but let's see why this is actually 3. All right, in case you don't see it. So the radius of circle G is 2. So if I do this vertical line right here, and I could just translate that same distance to the side, it breaks this into 3, a side of 3 and 2, because the whole thing is 5. So if this is 2, this has to be 3. And now this right here, AB and AC, are both tangent to circle G, and they intersect here. Therefore... A to this point and A to this point are the same, and they're both 3. All right, so we got that settled. So let's go ahead and move this uh, distance x and connect it with the radius. So we have one side here that's 2 plus x, and we've got this distance from this point to the center of the large circle we know is 3.5, and we can draw the radius from O all the way over here, and it's going to pass through the center of the circle. So the whole thing is R. This part is 2, so the hypotenuse of our triangle is R minus 2. You see that? All right. Now, uh, let's go ahead and highlight what that triangle looks like. That is triangle H. G O or H O G and using the Pythagorean theorem we've got R minus 2 squared equals X plus 2 squared plus 3.5 squared let's go ahead and clean up our picture so you can see those two and let's go ahead and take those two triangles out of context so you can really see what they look like all right so these are the two triangles we're going to relate we're going to see if we can figure out an expression for R and X that we can use here in just a little bit all right so well, let's simplify this one and then plug in R squared in just a moment so R minus 2 squared equals X plus 2 squared plus well 3.5 squared is 12.25 so of course squaring it you know you have to well you're multiplying binomials together so R squared minus 4 R plus 4 equals x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus 12.25, all right? So now we know that r squared is equal to x squared plus 6.5, and r squared is, of course, here. So let's go ahead and do that substitution right there. All right, now let's go ahead and clean all this stuff up right here. 6.5 squared is 42 and a quarter. So x squared, one of those exists on each side, so we can subtract an x squared. We can also subtract a 4 from both sides and get those things just gone. They make 0, so we don't need them anymore. And here we go. Let's see if we can solve this for x. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 12.25 from both sides. That gives us 30 minus 4r equals 4x. If I divide everything by 4, we get 7.5 minus r equals x. So there's an expression for x. Let's go ahead and tuck that away and take a look at what our picture looks like again. Now, we don't need these triangles anymore. So let's go ahead and clean those up. And we have this we have an expression for this x and we have capital and lowercase r so now let's explore how capital r and lowercase r are working here so this is lowercase r it's the radius of the smaller circle so the diameter would be 2r so 2r let's see if we can express what 2r is 2r is going to be equal to x plus capital r capital r from here to here that's the radius of the large circle so 2r is equal to x plus capital R. Now I know what x is, right? x is 7.5 minus r. So let's go ahead and substitute that in. And we can clean that up. r minus r, of course, well, that's just 0. Those things cancel each other out. You don't have to write plus 0. So 2r equals 7.5. Dividing both sides by 2, we're going to get that r is equal to 3 and 3 quarters. 3.75. That's the radius of the blue circle. The, the pink circle was 2 has a radius of 2. So now we can go ahead and, well, plug those numbers into our formulas for the circles, get it done. But the thing is, we need to have a ratio of integers. So it would be better to change this 
into a fraction. So 3.75 or 3 and 3 quarters, same thing. Let's change that into an improper fraction, 15 over 4, and plug everything into pi r squared. Oh, yeah. So now the pi's are going to reduce. 15 squared, 225, 4 squared is 16, and 2 squared is 4. Now this is 22 over 16 divided by 4. Divided by 4 is the same as times 1 fourth. So we end up with 225 over 64. That was super, super cool. Hey, I've got some cool links for you to check out in the description. I hope you liked this, this problem right here. I absolutely loved it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that kind of happy stuff. And until next time, I hope you have a great day.